Minister Tan, welcome to the 2021 Jean-Yves Rivard Conference. It's a pleasure to have uh, you with us. Uh, for the benefit of our audience, would you first briefly describe how COVID-19 uh, has been addressed in Taiwan and how's the situation right now, just for the benefit of the audience? Certainly. So in Taiwan, we managed to counter the pandemic this time with no lockdown and also the countering the infodemic associated with no takedown. And to date, there's less than 1000 confirmed cases, the vast majority of which are imported cases detected at the border quarantine. And to date, there's been 10 deaths uh, so far. Uh, the mood is quite post pandemic actually people do wear masks and wash their hands uh, and observe physical distancing but otherwise it's been months uh, since we had a local uh, outbreak and so um, i would say that this time we successfully played the sars playbook that we created during 2003 2004 and i'm happy to share it yeah thank you um would you tell us after the onset of the pandemic, how and when has the digital uh, ministry uh, step in and what kind of digital tools were deployed? Perhaps we, you can provide some examples. Certainly, uh, what I think digital is useful is when it's assistive. That's to say of all the technologies, um, I think soap, hand sanitizers, mask, these are the actual useful technologies, but digital can assist people's understanding and access to these more important chemical and physical technologies. For example, the earliest uh, memory I had around COVID this time is around a mask shortage. I personally went to four or five different stores only to be told that, hey, our mask has sold out just five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. And this is not just me, it's literally everyone because back in January, the Taiwanese people, 23 million people, uh, have access only to less than 2 million domestically produced medical grade masks a day. So we uh, invented this way of rationing that coupled with the civic technologies contribution, let everybody see very clearly which pharmacy near them still have masks available. And as they queue in line using their universal healthcare IC card to buy some masks, the people queuing after them can see with their phone in real time every 30 second updated that the pharmacist is indeed reporting this to the National Health uh, Insurance Agency. So this calms everybody down as we ran by the production to around 20 million masks a day. And the digital also assists people to wear the mask correctly. We have a um, cute spoke stock, the Shiba Inu named Song Chai, that says very early on, wear a mask to protect your own face against your own unwashed hands, so you won't do this. Uh, and this is a brilliant digital message because it speaks to rational self-interest. At that time, remember early in 2020, uh, we still don't know much about airborne transmission. Uh, the asymptomatic uh, transfer is still being discussed and debated, and whether masks are useful to these scenarios are up to scientific conversation. But a mask protect yourself against your own unwashed hand? That's just a fact. So people would remind each other to protect one another. And when the cute dog later on discussed, for example, you need to observe physical distancing, the dog said, when you're outdoor, keep two Shibas away. When you're indoor, keep three Shibas away and so on. And people remember it very clearly and carefully share the message and they wouldn't be captured by divisiveness, conspiracy theories or outrage. That's another way that digital was helpful. So I guess that within uh, this initiative, you had uh, different forms of collaboration with public health experts and officials. And mm -hmm. what kind of uh, collaboration you set in place? between these ministries or mm -hmm. with health experts? Yes. Yeah. 
Um, our CECC, or the Central Epidemic Command Center, uh, is an institution designed in 2004, right after SARS, to get all the ministries, all the municipalities, all the city government officials in the same building, so that every time they agree on something, the commander, the health minister, Chen Shizhou, would announce it on that day at 2 p.m. pronto. So for more than 100 days, um, people just watched these 2 p.m. press conferences, and my contribution mostly is to make sure that people who have ideas can speak out and get amplified to these press conferences. For example, there was a uh, professor that invented a way to reuse traditional rice cookers without adding any water to dry steam and kill the virus without killing the musk. So the musk could be reused when there was still a shortage. So I personally filmed uh, such a procedure uh, and uh, redubbed it in a lot of languages. Or there was a young boy late last April who called saying, Hey, you're rationing our mask, but all I get, my family get is pink ones. And all the boys in my class have medical masks that are navy blue. So I don't want to wear pink to school. People will laugh at me. And uh, very much uh, 24 hours after he called, uh, all the medical officers in the CECC press conference, regardless of gender, well, wore pink. And the Minister Chen even said Pink Panther was a childhood hero. So the boy became the most hit boy in the class for only he has the color that the heroes and heroes' heroes wear. And these uh, anecdotes encourage people to innovate more and deepen our democracy even during a pandemic. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you were trained as a computer scientist. So mm -hmm. how and where does a computer scientist learn about co-design strategies and the mm -hmm. importance of looking at ways uh, people use these tools in real life. So mm -hmm. how come you've uh, discovered mm -hmm. co-design? Yeah, my subfield uh, in computer science uh, is computer language design and social interaction design. And these two subfields within the computer science larger field are perhaps the ones most close to human beings. When we design a computer language, this is not to get something done immediately. Rather, it's about getting people a set of tools that they can think with and communicate with. So a language designer need to be humble and empower the people wielding the language to be the true expression creators, poets, storytellers, and so on in the language that we design. And social interaction design is about, instead of like radio or television, just one person talking to millions of people, our job is to design the space upon which uh, millions of people may listen to one another, listening as skill. Again, this calls for a more humble, more participatory way of working with, say, professional comedians. That's a nice segue to the next question, because as you are aware, misinformation is a real mm -hmm. issue from a public mm -hmm. health perspective. So would you tell us a bit about the initiative Humor Against Rumor? What were mm -hmm. the goals, who contributed, and how has uh, civil society responded to that initiative? Certainly. So. Uh, while we did not have much conspiracy theories around mask use uh, or 5G antenna uh, around that, uh, thanks to uh, the mask availability map, we did have uh, some misinformation, uh, some of which intentional. So disinformation uh, about say, um, and I quote, the state is confiscating all tissue paper producers material to make mask. So we'll run out of tissue paper soon. So go out and buy, unquote. Um, um, this turns out to be uh, started by tissue paper resellers, to go figure, uh, and that really caused a panic buying. But when we detect such a rumor uh, is trending, have a higher than one basic uh, production rate, uh, the R value, the reproduction value, uh, we roll out a vaccine of the mind against such virus of the mind. And what's a vaccine of the mind? It's humor. Because when people laugh about something, they don't feel this outrage that uh, gets channeled into discrimination or into hate speech anymore. They instead 
uh, laugh about it and talk about the facts, right? So our uh, premier, Su Zhen Chang, wrote this out just two hours after the tissue paper conspiracy. He first wiggles his bottom a little bit, says in very large fonts, each of us only have one pair of bottoms. It's a wordplay because in Mandarin, a uh, bottom twin it sounds the same as stockpiling twin. So this is essentially saying, well, you couldn't use that much tissue paper anyway. Uh, and then a table is saying, uh, tissue paper are made out of South American materials, while PPEs are made out of domestic material. They're plastic products. There's no way that the state can confiscate one and make another. And this is hilarious. Uh, this gets shared much more widely than the original conspiracy theory. And when people laugh about it, they can't unsee the table uh, or like the premier, the fact that he made himself literally butt of the joke. Uh, and then uh, people uh, didn't panic by anymore. People come down, remind one another, it's not the same material. And the conspiracy theory doesn't have a uh, ground to breed. And so these ideas of humor over rumor enables us to tap into the collective intelligence of meme makers and storytellers without encroaching on the freedom of speech. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, we, we still have a, a, num a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, what do you believe are the key lessons at this stage in the pandemic with respect to the drawbacks and also uh, the advantages of digital tools? Would you uh, like to, because I, I know that in such initiative uh, that are where we need to go fast and respond uh, to the, any issues that are emerging, uh, there might be also um, um, not only ingredients for success, but also ways to either avoid or handle uh, the failures. <laughs> yes, um, the daily press conference is essential. And I would encourage people around the world to think about how quickly you can admit the failures or mistakes and how quickly can you relearn the lessons that people have already learned. Maybe they're frontline workers, maybe they're pharmacists, maybe they're just a young boy not wanting to wear pink, um, and how quickly you can integrate their thoughts and ideas into the decision-making process. Um, my um, way of doing digital development is called agile so it calls for a fixed um, like seven days uh, at a time sprint cycle so every time anyone criticizes about say our mask distribution for example we had an mp gao hong and she was VP of data analytics of Foxconn Group, so she knows something about data. She look at the map and say, hey, minister, you think it's fine that the pharmacies overlap almost completely with the distribution of population centers, but there is a bias, she said to the health minister. On the rural places, even if people have access to the pharmacy on the same physical distance, the public transportation, the time cost is not the same. They may spend up to five times more time on public transportation to get to the nearby pharmacy. And by the time they get there, maybe the pharmacy has already closed. So there is bias, but the bias could not be seen if you just overlap the two map layers. And so this data bias, which reflects a, I guess, Taipei-centric bias, um, it, it's true, right? It, it's there in our minds. And so the minister didn't defend the process at all. Uh, and he just said, legislator, teach us. And so along with the OpenStreetMap community, MP Gao Hong An's idea did make into the next week's sprint deployment. We changed the distribution algorithm. We also worked with convenience store to enable pre-ordering and 24 hour pickup so that there's no uh, urban and rural discrepancy when it comes to access to PPEs. But if we had not published the real-time open data, open API, every 30 seconds, it's impossible to make such a evidence-based interpolation and then co-creation. So I guess the lesson is to um, admit your mistakes very quickly and say by next week, your idea will become the policy. So it takes humility, but it also takes capacity to respond. Mm -hmm. So do you have thousands of uh, data scientists working with you? <laughs> what's, mm -hmm. what's the... Yes. Yeah. 
uh, on the Gap Zero initiative, G0V, uh, there's, I think, at the moment, around 9,000 people uh, participating in what we call forking the government. Fork in open source culture means taking something's already there, taking it into a different direction without writing what's done off, uh, and then with the help of being merged back sometime in the future. So it's a sense of exploration for all the government digital services that's something that gov the tw the gov zero people could fork that into something that g zero v the tw so just by changing an o to a zero on your browser bar you get into the shadow government uh, that works maybe better that's a uh, viable alternatives and the mask availability map and so on are developed that way and when we see that these experiments actually work better we in the government uh, instead of beating them <laughs> we'll just join them and merging this contribution, which is always open source, free of copyright or patent restrictions, will just merge it back into digital service for the public sector. This is what we call a people-public-private partnership. That's wonderful. Um, I um, I would like to ask you one more question, mm -hmm. if I may. Sure. Um, from a Canadian perspective, uh, we may I, I may believe that Taiwan was already pretty much digitalized before the pandemic. So, I would believe that Taiwanese mm -hmm. are very proficient users of digital mm -hmm. tools. So, is my assumption warranted, and mm -hmm. does it make a difference? Um, we have moved beyond uh, this idea of being users um, of digital tools. Uh, we now teach instead of digital literacy or media literacy in basic education, we talk about digital and media competence, meaning that instead of users, people are creators and producers of digital tools. All the primary schoolers um, have access to high-speed GPU computation uh, with broadband as human rights. They can try their own AI models, which are our generation's uh, fire, right? Uh, they batch process cognitive functions just as fire used to batch process digestive functions and just like fire um, which is sometimes dangerous it did destroy entire cities AI has its dark sides too but we didn't restrict the use of AI to just trained professionals uh, but we teach six years olds how to use them responsibly and also within safety perimeters with ethics, just like we teach six years olds how to cook, how to use fire <laughs> responsibly and share their recipes. So I think a competence based education framework, in addition to broadband as human right, is the key to the spirit of co-creation. Thank you so much, Minister Tang. Would you like to close this conversation mm -hmm. with some thoughts or words of wisdom? Um, I'll just quote my favorite um, Canadian singer-songwriter, Leonard Cohen, uh, in his uh, words. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. And that is how the light gets in. Thank you for your great questions, Professor. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Thank you so much for having, bringing light to this conference. Yeah, it's a great way to start a day.